Alice in Wonderland. Hi. How are you? I'm just, this is the best day of my life. How does it feel to be a gecko? It's not easy being green. No, it's not. But I honestly feel it. I love reptiles and frogs mm -hmm. and stuff. And yeah, this is, this is my dream. And I really think I'm meant to be a green animal. Now, you're from Australia, correct? Yes. And I've heard in Australia they're known for having like pretty gnarly, fucked up. Super gnarly. Reptiles. Super gnarly. Have you encountered yes. many? Yes. My um, manager, Garth, uh, when we used to live in Australia, he was a reptile rest. Like he would go and rescue reptiles from people's homes and rehome them in the bush. And so I would come with him and I would actually film while he really? went and like wrangled these deadly snakes. And um, it was not chill at all. Like one of them definitely came in and tried to strike me. And I'm sure Garth has had so many terrible experiences. You guys had your own like Steve, what's the Steve, Steve Irwin? Steve Irwin type of show where you were like filming. Well, I think there's one video on his YouTube still where he edited it to really heavy metal music. And he's like, I think he was trying to um, wrangle a brown snake, which is the deadliest, one of the deadliest snakes in the world. <laughs> That's badass. Yeah, I actually filmed from behind a door that time because I was like, I'm, fuck no. I'm not How are you with, uh, like, if a, if I had a snake and I totally was like, here, fine. hold my snake. Oh, yeah. I used to have a pet snake called Sparkles. Okay. He was a diamond python. Um, and Garth actually used to have a bunch of snakes. And we've been best friends since we were really young. So I was just always around reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that because you were growing up with them, it made you a little bit less squeamish to them as you got older? I don't think I was ever squeamish with huh. reptiles, ever. I love lizards. I've always loved li lizards so much and frogs and stuff. Allison, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What's been the most persistent thought on your mind lately? Uh, is everything going to be okay? Is everything going to be okay? Yeah. Okay, when you say everything, is it every? Is it like everything externally in the universe or is it everything with you or is it a combination it's a combination those? okay i sit there and i'm like oh my god global warming mm -hmm. that's scaring me mm -hmm. um you know there's a, in, uncertainty and i really like okay. uh because you know being an artist everything's so up and down all the time sure yeah you need to have a little bit of stability and sometimes you know that you go through these waves where everything's a little bit in limbo mm -hmm. and i'm kind of feeling that so i'm just like Please. Sometimes I have this thought that I wish I could had this remote where I could fast forward into the future and I wouldn't have to live the next like few months. But I really did live it. Interesting. But I woke up and I nailed it. What are some go. things just speaking on the uncertainty? Are yes. there things in your life that you know for sure that are like undeniable constants? Yes. My dog. Okay. Is the best thing in the world. I have a really, really great group of friends. Okay. A really small, very small group of friends. Mm -hmm. And also, um, and this is going to sound super cheesy, but I love music. And so I always have that to lean, lean back on. Like ever since right. I was in high school, right, right. I was just honestly in the corner listening on my CD player. And no one can take that. <laughs> no one from can take you. that from you. There's a, I actually. It never got released, but I wrote a song about it where there's little things that you experience in your life that brings you joy that you discovered yourself, mm. that you don't associate with any other person. So whenever you go back to that, and for me, it's like music or, uh, you know, particular bands or um, Christmas lights. I love Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. It I always associate it with a really good feeling that has nothing to do with any other situation or any other person. So no one can take that from me. Mm. And I'm like, that is my happiness. And um, I did a lot of work actually over the pandemic to make sure that the happiness that I feel is reliant on myself. 100%. That's uh, a big, yeah. uh, people come in here and they talk about that a lot. And the number one thing I feel like I'm always talking to people about is like finding some kind of happiness that is within your control. It's not centered around a person, not even centered no. around like a career or centered around Can't. anything external. Just no. uh, my dream in life is I want to be able to just be like, I want to have like, like, I want to be mentally in a place where, like, I could have no possessions, no friends, no family, no money, no anything, and still be happy. I'm totally not there. That's, like, some <laughs> enlightenment yeah. shit. But that, I feel like that would be the goal. Yeah, I actually did a lot of work during the pandemic um, on that. And mm -hmm. I got to the best place I ever have been, and I still am there. Nice. Um, where I just, you know, wasn't looking for anything. I didn't need anything external to feed what I needed to be happy. Mm -hmm. um, and I just focused on things that again no one could take from me and made me happy because again we we're all alone at the time and um a lot of things were uncertain that was super limbo for me and a lot of people you know i had i've been touring for so long i never stopped traveling and i was just like alone what are some <laughs> things that you're uncertain about now 
Um, I just, I think just as an artist, you're always uncertain because okay. I wake up every day and my life is I get up, take my dog for a walk, get back in, work on music or do something like this. And I don't know externally my perception. So I'm always kind of like creatively, I'm not doing it to please anyone else. It's sure. just for myself. So I think sometimes when I do think too much about that, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, think about how like you're perceived. Yeah, I just don't, I don't really, th- when I don't think about it, it's, it's not, no, not what I, not how I'm perceived. Actually, weirdly, I've never really cared about that. You've never cared about, even no. like when you were like, because I feel like when you, when I was at, at the beginning, when you're like in middle school, that's like all a lot of people care about. Okay, is like how I actually have a crazy Eureka moment that yeah, happened what, to me in eighth grade because I was really heavily bullied in high school, okay. super bullied. Okay. So I did not have a good uh, school time at all to the point where I moved schools to a music school because no one got me. <laughs> what was what was your Eureka moment? I went to, so in Australia, it's composed compulsory to wear a school uniform yeah. whatever school you go to yeah and then we have these things called mufti days which is like our plain clothes day okay. every once in a while and i i think my dress sense has actually never changed but i was in um like a really oversized beatles t-shirt with the four beatles and it said let it be mm. on the bottom and then uh these terrible like zip off cargo pants which i kind of fuck with now um, and I had, you know, like the strands and like the dyed black hair and I just kind of was in the corner playing cello and, um, the, this, the very pretty popular girl that I wanted to, I was like, oh, you know, I want someone to like me and sure, sure. cause I was, I, my sister jokes, she's like, you were that cause we went to the same school. She's like, you were that weird kid on like the hill at lunch, like rolling around eating grapes by yourself. Yeah. And it's very specific. But then you grow up and th- that, that becomes a niche, the hill kid. I, I guess, yeah, being the hill kid. Well, yeah, two Eureka moments. So that day, this girl, who I will not name, but remember her name okay. very, very well. Okay. She walked in in front of my whole class and everyone used to be like, oh, she's a loser. And she was like, what are you wearing? What is that? What is that? And I was like, oh. She's like, is that like your band or something, loser? Is and that I, your? Yeah. Be- and she just, said that about your Beatles the T-shirt. Is that Beatles. your band? And I was like, bro, this is the day when I realized that none of y'all are cool. And um, the Beatles, are f- like the fact that you just said that mm-hmm. about the Beatles, makes you so uncool that can, I don't give a fuck. I can I ask you a question? So yeah. you you remember this girl's name? You don't have to say it. But no, what do you think she is doing? I right know what now? she's doing now. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio moon, so I know what. Are you, I, are you big into astrology? Not really. Scorpio. <laughs> no, uh, so from what I do, I don't know a lot about astrology, yeah. but Scorpio is the one that like people. I'm a s- seriously psycho. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. No, but I, I did keep, I did actually think about it recently and I, I went and checked on, I found her on Facebook. Yeah. Did you reach out? No. No. But there's a few of them. When I, I remember in 2015, when I first played Coachella, mm-hmm. a bunch of them were like, hey, it's blah, blah. Remember me from school? Yeah. Are you the type of person? Do you do you hold grudges? Do you remember that? Or um, I don't hold grudges. No, because I feel like there's this like heaviness in your gut, and your gut has another brain. You know. Yeah. I don't like to do that, but I don't forget. Okay. So like I I just I'm. Do you hold when they when when you're playing Coachella and all of the people in middle school who bullied, bullied you reach out and they're like. Oh my God, Alice, so happy for you. Are They're you like, in, can in I the... get a ticket? I'm like, no. No, but uh, are you in the back of your mind? Are you like, fuck these people? Like, No, I'm just kind of like, huh. I was kind of like, huh. Is it, okay, and then so on the other side, do you, is it like a vinda, do you feel like vindicated in a way? Like, yeah. Like validated? Like, yeah, like I'm um, all, I, I made it out on top. No, actually, weirdly, I people have asked me that before, and I, I, I don't. I, I'm telling you, like, internally, me as a person, I don't feel different from that kid in eighth grade. So for me, this isn't a You're revenge You're still rolling thing. around the hill eating still grapes? Still rolling around the hill eating grapes, but, like, this isn't a revenge thing. That doesn't motivate me. What motivates me to get on top is is literally just because I'm so – I like being creative. Yeah. And I like trying new things, and I, it's, I'm competitive with myself. Yeah. So – that's not really what I look to, but it is kind of funny. I'm like, huh? Okay. Well, it, it ties back into what we were talking about, because like, if you if you were to be, you know, compelled by wanting to show other people that you made it, that would be an external thing. Yeah, it just, it's just not really how I operate. I think like the yeah, I I don't. It's not what satisfies me. And I've said this a billion times. Yeah. Um. I I've been broke, like bankrupt, bl- broke before, and I've been able to afford things i've had both and 
for me, living richly is being happy internally and like being able to have my two feet on the ground mm -hmm. every day and like being okay with where I'm at, you know. And in the times when you were broke, <laughs> did you did you have that perspective in yeah, that moment? Yeah, I did actually. Weirdly, I was like, okay, I'm okay. I'm 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 I I worked out what gratitude was. Sure. And I was like, okay, cool. I, I might be eating tuna out of a can for a bit, but firstly, I can work my way out of this. There are options. Oh yeah. Like oh, yeah. I don't want to give up, and I can get out of this. And I did. I just had to fucking work hard. It's yeah. like, um, it's you can make it out of anywhere. And again, I have this song called Forever, and it applies to this. But it will feel like forever until it doesn't. But sure. as long as you know that. Actually, um, when I was I, I I was in New Zealand for a bit last year, and I was quarantining. They make you quarantine. Like the army takes you off the plane and puts you in like a room for two weeks. And like, you're not allowed to leave. It's kind of crazy. But I had a friend who I met there where we'd have an hour out and we'd walk around in circles in the yard, <laughs> like a, like jail. <laughs> like it felt like a jail. Really? Oh yeah. I remember New Zealand was very <laughs> hardcore on the quarantine. Yeah. And he turned out to be randomly. Yeah. Uh, he was, he's the coach of Zoe Sinna. Uh, De Chanel? No, she's, um, she's a, 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 like an Olympic gold medalist. Oh, fuck. Like snowboarder. And he was teaching me a thing called the pit. What's and the I pit? use it all the time now. And he's like, if you want to achieve something higher than where you are now, yeah. example, being fucking broke or whatever it is, being yeah. in an abusive relationship, trying to get out of it or yeah. feeling suicidal or not being happy in yourself internally, there is a thing called the pit or work. If you want to be the fucking best in the world at what you do, mm -hmm. That's not easy. What and is you, the pit? So the pit is uh, like, so you have to imagine you're at the top of a pit. And then in order to get to the next level, you have to go down and get back out of the ah, pit. You know what I mean? You can't be afraid of uh, and, the and dip. The dip. 100% yeah. guaranteed you're going to be in that dip at some oh, yeah. point. You got to You got to dip you down. You probably you know what it's there. like. Well, you know, we, yes. were talk we were talking a little bit before the cameras started rolling about you played uh, Red Rocks. Yeah. And you were talking about like being nervous beforehand. Yeah. And I, I just, <laughs> I'm on a tour right now, and I get really nervous beforehand. I feel like that those nerves, like that's that's a bit of a dip. That, you have like, to, you have to be in your head about like, oh fuck, what if this happens? What if you know whatever? And you gotta move through that. And then on the other side is like, holy shit, I for, just played. For Red me, Rocks. the dip was actually prepping for Red Rocks. It was like the months, like getting to it and making my set, writing the string parts. Um, you know, organizing all the instrumentals and making it like a spe like the visuals, everything that was the pit. Like I didn't mm. sleep, and no one sees that side of it. You know, they see the top of the no, iceberg. They don't. But I, I they see you rocking out. Yeah, I was like so so hyper focused on that for months. Where I don't know, you know, when you're like working too hard and you you like sit up and you've forgotten to eat and your hair's kind of greasy, but everywhere and you yeah. start getting at. I was at that point, I couldn't see, like I couldn't interact with people. Yeah. I was doing that, and I was like, oh my god, I'm in the pit, but it's okay because now I know that I'm in the pit. The only way to get out yeah. of the pit is get back fucking out of the pit. I, I, it Keep takes going. a lot of. Uh, I'm noticing it takes a lot of uh, time and a lot of repetition in going through the pit to be able to zoom out so that yes. when things are going when things are going badly you're not like oh it's going to be like this forever because you've ridden that way and then when things are going good you're like it's not going to be like this no, forever no when you're i think it's going good i literally tweeted the other day why am i on oh my i have like a side twitter and i'm like why am i feeling guilty when yeah. i'm happy which is like the biggest thing that i deal with is when i'm feeling happy i'm like this can't and i think it's just like a defense mechanism cuz you know, we have so many failures in our lives. Like again, also the pit. You can't be fail af afraid to fail. Oh no, there's good stuff in the pit. There's good stuff, and there's failure in the pit. You you have to fail sometime to get out of. Like the pit means your f like failure, but failure means that you've learned something to make you stronger to get out of the pit. I feel like we're we're on a we're on a, <laughs> a good motivational roll here. <laughs> Would you, would you want to? Should we take some calls? Hell yeah! Let's help with some pits. Hugh, um, you're on the phone with with me and Alice in Wonderland. Is uh, is there anything in particular that you you called in to talk about? Well, there's one thing more so than others, but I have a whole multitude multitude of things that I could talk about. Let's let's start, uh, let the I'll one the one thing that you said is more than others. Let's focus on that one thing. What is that one thing? Okay. So I got in a little bit of trouble when I was 15 and 
then I got my pilot's license. I got my pilot's license before I turned 21. And then uh, that thing didn't show up on my medical record. But then now that I renewed my medical and I'm 26 now, uh, a year and a half after getting my newest medical, the FAA sends me a really nice letter in the mail saying, hey, your medical not technically invalid, but don't fly anymore because uh, we need to take a look at this. Let's sum this all up here. Hugh, okay, so from what I understand about uh, your situation, Hugh, um, you were, uh, uh, when you were 15, you had a DUI? But Is that it, what happened? But you said that it wasn't, it was dismissed, right? So, yeah, it was expunged. So I got a deal called uh, juvenile, I had a juvenile court officer that gave me what was called uh, informal judgment. And uh -huh. ultimately he had three options. One, the first option was hand me over to the DOT and say, try this kid as a as an adult and like throw the book at him he's a terrible kid the second option is what he typically does and just wipes his hand clean like conscious pilot and uh says do whatever you want to him and then the third option is what he did and so there's no court no anything and then everything is expunged from my record the only thing that i have is an arrest record right that's weird. I don't know how that works in America. I don't know how that works can in you America get, either. Can you speak to a lawyer? Yeah. Uh, so I never had a lawyer. Like I said, I had a... So since I was a juvenile, I was under 18, uh, yeah. I went to this guy. I can't think of his name for the life of me, but he's a juvenile court officer. And he determined, like, ultimately, like, what to do in specific situations like that. So... Yeah. Well, he sounds like it was, a uh, idiot. <laughs> he knew, he knew yeah. my family, and he knew that... Oh, sorry. Well, he, he knows, wasn't a lawyer. He definitely knows more than I do. <laughs> here's the thing. But here's the thing. Like, Please. if it was expunged or whatever, then you shouldn't have a criminal record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So someone well, sounds it, like it's not that I have a criminal a record. I don't have a criminal record. I just have an arrest record. Like, you... Hugh, it's on my record Hugh, that Hugh, I got Hugh, 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 Yeah. You fly yeah. planes? I do. Before you fly planes, do you ever drink a bunch of alcohol? I've never, and I, I promise you this, I, so there's a saying that pilots have, and it's eight, eight hours between bottle and throttle, which means you have to give it at least eight hours before one drink before you can fly a plane. And do and you like the, do you religiously follow the rules of bottle and to throttle? Absolutely. Well, I believe you. I actually believe you. And I yeah. and look, you know, me and Allison, we're no federal aviation administration, you but know, you don't know that. I don't know that. No. I don't know that. Yeah. Allison could be uh, a, a secret FAA agent. I think if there's a on your record that there's <laughs> a, an arrest from when you were 15, I believe, isn't it when you're 18 it gets cleared and then they, it shouldn't be on your record? Isn't that a thing? Or is that... Did I just make is that, that a thing in, is that a thing in I think uh, Australia? So. I think... I don't know. Did I just dream that? Possibly. Cool. That's an interesting thing to dream. But I feel like if it's juvenile, it doesn't apply when you're an adult. Do you know what I mean? Hugh, if you need us to show up in court in the gecko suits and <laughs> testify for you, we we will, and that's yeah. and that's the uh, important thing I think you should glean. But from I, us. I, is this? I would a, love a, that. <laughs> I'm down, but is it? So then, your medical records when they're trying to do your medical or whatever, it's saying you had an, you had an arrest when you were 15. That's that's the problem. Um. Yeah. So uh, the, there's a a vetting that's done like with the doctor that you get your medical from um, uh -huh. and which I mean he, he makes sure that you can see you can hear and you can do all that but then there's also like uh, a mental vetting so he makes sure that you're mentally able to fly a plane and then he makes sure that there's no like underlying issues like with alcohol or drugs or anything like that um, uh -huh. and he cleared me and oh, so but then but then, a year and a half later, uh, after I got the most recent medical, 
I don't know if the FAA just has a backlog of, you know, here's all of these potential pilots that, uh, uh, you know, will have a drug or alcohol problem. Oh, so I guess you're allowed and to fly the planes, but you're on a list of like, oh, this guy might be boozing. I uh, maybe now I don't know about that, but like, listen, they what sent if you, me a, what if a you letter. Made a badge? What if you made a badge? Yeah, like, what if you made a badge when you flew that said, "Hey, I have a record of being arrested, but I was 15 and it was clear." <laughs> I don't know. I would about be, that I'd one. feel good about that, that you're being honest, you know? Yeah. In fact, you should actually you should start out. You know how you have your uh, uh, opening um, announcements onto the plane? <laughs> you can you can mention that. Listen, when I was 15, I got super drunk and I drove a car. Uh, but, you know, that's just what happens when you're 15. And they let me off. Yeah. And, well, and folks, as much fun as it would be to living. get that's super just... drunk and fly this plane, I won't do it. I think you should just walk around. <laughs> whatever you're doing at all times with that badge and and that should be like your social media tagline i think mm-hmm. you should own it hugh do any of these yeah. solutions that we have so, attempted to provide you uh speak to you uh, uh no i just got one to tell a story <laughs> that's fair well listen hugh um is there anything else you but, want to say uh, to the people at the computer before we go i love you all while I've been listening to you literally all day. I've been working 14 hours today, hauling grain to Ben. Allison, I know of you, and I know of your music, but I'm going to give it a little bit more uh, of a listen to. You should. Hell yeah. You should. I like that. Thank you for calling, Hugh. Thank you for calling. Well, thank you for taking my (laughs) Uh, He cut off at the end. Um, what, What do you think of Hugh and his situation? I think that Hugh... I think it's more an internal thing than an external thing. Really? Like, I feel like no one's, again, you know how everyone has their own narrative going on in their heads? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The FAA feel, has their narrative. Yeah. The like, I feel like a fun badge yeah. or a t-shirt. Yeah. Just kind of owning it. Yeah. It's is cool. I, I like, I feel like uh, when you're, when you're 15, you know, you, you, you shouldn't be, I don't, I don't know. I don't know to what degree you should be it's held possible. to the standards of. What That's your life was, was like when you're 15. That, you, that they would ri- wipe that. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to have to Google that. Well, I'm glad I I'm there sh- I'm glad that there are systems in place to like, you know, well, I guess I guess I thought there were. Yeah. To make it so that if you fucked up when you were a kid, you could still go on as an adult to live a real life. Yeah. I wonder if yeah. I wonder if it applies to every type of crime. I don't know. I, I if you kill someone at 15, you you have to you have to answer for that. Like yeah, no for sure. Huh. So, I don't I, I thought that things get scrubbed after juvenile age. Hmm. Anyway, let's see. Make the badge. Let's, let's I would like to, to see that badge if you do. Let's talk to Chase in Philadelphia. Okay, Philly. Hey, is this Chase? What's up? This is Lyle, right? Yeah, this is Lyle and Allison. Hey. Holy shit! Hey guys, well, uh, how are you? We're doing good. How are you? Uh, pretty good. A little surprised, but pretty good. Um, Chase, what is it that you wanted to talk to us about today? Um, so, um, in in the past couple of years, I have uh, gotten the opportunity to uh, be an animator for my uh, profession, which is, you know, really amazing, and I've worked really hard for it, and uh, kind of a goal that I had for a long time, but uh. Lately, I've been feeling like um, kind of the anxiety of having that goal is, uh, uh, or like the anxiety of possibly losing this position that I have is kind of mm. usurping the joy that I get out of the job now. Interesting. So, Interesting. I feel like that's yeah. thematically similar to some stuff that we were talking about. We were about. really just talking about that. Yeah. And I think as a creative, it's so important to not feel like your job is a job. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I definitely do. And um, what what's giving you the anxiety? Like, is it is it people that you're working with, or uh, it's mainly just like, <clears throat> sorry, it's mainly just like the kind of the thought of like, oh man, what happens to my life if I if I don't get this or if this if I fuck uh-huh. up somehow, basically, 
the or pit. if they don't have the money anymore, then it, exactly. If I go back to the pit, I, I climb my way out of the pit. Now, yeah. what happens if I go back? Well, if you go back, it'll make you stronger. The the one advice I will give you, just from my own experience of many times having that similar thought. So, just so you know, you're not alone and very mm-hmm. valid. Um, is you cannot be scared to fail because you're going to fail eventually at something and you just have to know and be prepared that that's okay and that's going to happen. But if you don't put yourself out there, you're never going to know either way. And then if you do fail, whatever, yeah. then you try another th- a way to do it. And again, there's always options. There's always ways to do it. And if you you just have to work hard and, and, and see what happens and put yourself out there, honestly, or you're just going to be... You know, you don't want to be really old and go, what if, you know? Yeah, that that's uh, honestly all really good advice. Um, I also wanted to ask you guys, like, uh, pro- probably you both can relate to this. Uh, when you are achieving or like really trying to get a goal or uh, something like that, and then you get it, um, usually you go okay, like I need to go to the next step or I need to keep working or whatever. And uh, something, I think you actually said this earlier, Allison, like feeling uh, like guilty when you're not really like doing anything or like you're kind of relaxing a little bit. Um, I've I've felt that for the past few years. It's just like, okay, I got here. I got to stay here. And if I ever kind of slack off a little bit, I'm, uh, you know, I don't deserve this position or whatever. You know what it's called, and we all have it. It's called impost. Like we feel like a fr- everyone Imposter feels like a fr- syndrome. everyone feels like a fraud at some point. Sometimes oh, yeah. I'm like up at Red Rocks or Lollapalooza. Yeah, and we're playing this show, and I'm like, "Holy fuck, am I like in a DMT trip right now? Is yeah, this real? Yeah. Does like this really simulation. happen? <laughs> like, you know what? Yes. Even if you're in, this is your DMT trip. Like, just that's that's your reality right now, and it is happening. The guilt I feel is when something really good happens, like in a less work like and I didn't and it, it just kind of came to me because I'm so used to having to pit through everything um, but I think that uh, the you know what you should focus on is like what can I do next what's next instead of like being complacent in where you're at because I think that keeps us driven and excited and as creatives it's really important to have that excitement and drive towards what's next. So to, to that chase, yes. uh, mm-hmm. uh, what like specifically for you do you think would would be next? Um, I don't know. I've kind of been trying to think about it. Like, uh, I don't know. Like before I became where I like, got this position, it was like a really pie in the sky idea for me. So now that I've got it. I work in the education sector, so I make like, you know, little cartoons for, uh, you know, two to seven year olds to help them like learn English. So I'm oh, like, yeah. okay, since I'm already in there, I might as well pivot to another education company or something that works like that. And uh, that's not necessarily what I really want to do, but um, do if do? I'm working as an animator, I'll be I'll be happy regardless, you know. What well, what is it that you? You said that uh, that's not necessarily what you want to do. What is it that you do want to do? I mean, the, the dream is to, like, you know, have a show on Adult Swim and, you know, <laughs> cool. create it and everything. So <laughs> can I can I do you uh, like do YouTube or TikTok or anything like that? Because, I mean, the fastest way to have your own show is to just start making it. Yeah, true. Um, you don't really know. I, I, I had an anymore. Instagram I have an Instagram. I don't do TikTok. I've been trying to hold out. Um, and uh, Lyle, I actually emailed you, uh, you did. trying to trying to solicit uh, anim- animation services or see if you needed any. Oh. Um, well, listen. So, you don't need me. You don't need email. Adult Swim. You do need TikTok. You need yourself. You to need like yourself. Just do it. Because here's the thing. People like always ask. Oh, you know, how do you start writing songs? Like, how do you do this? Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Just fucking do it and it's gonna be pit it's gonna be pit gonna be for pit. a bit it's gonna, pit, be- it's gonna be pit for a bit <laughs> it'll feel like forever until it doesn't <laughs> but you just gotta do it you just gotta do it if that's what you want to do you don't want to be like one day like what if like fuck it 
you go to your nine to five animation job, make really cool cartoons for little mm-hmm. kids to learn English, which mm-hmm. I love. And then at <laughs> night, just sacrifice a couple of hours yeah. sleep and just do it. Put yourself out there. You can make all Don't your be- fucked up hentai animations yeah. that I know you got going on in that brand of yours. <laughs> we want to see it. But you should just do it, honestly. The only way that either of us are where we're at is we've been like, well, fuck it. We'll just do it. Let's do it. <laughs> and it sucks. It's so much rejection. And you're gonna hear a lot of no, but just do it. Just how do you? Do how, do, how do you? Wow. How do you feel right now, Chase? Um, not gonna lie, I feel uh, pretty motivated. My my heart is racing, Good. sweating a little bit. Good. Um, don't, Good. Don't, yeah, don't I feel like I should quit my job and just uh, no. start, a, start a TikTok animation campaign. Nobody said, <laughs> no, 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 Chase, no. Chase, Chase, nobody said you had to, nobody, Chase, no, we're not telling you to stop doing things. We're telling you to start doing no, things. No, no, what I'm saying is you're going to have, <laughs> I am mad at you, Chase, right now. No, 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 no. You keep doing that because also you don't want to fuck that up. Like there's going to be people that will appear in your life in 10 years from that you met from when you met at the animation company and you're going to be doing an, like you got to do it on top of it just mm-hmm. again like add a couple of hours to your day and just do it like drink some yerba mate drink some red bull whatever you energy don't do the other illegal things oh yeah and or do it i no don't four know locos. yeah no f- <laughs> and just do it I, I honestly because otherwise you're not going to do it and it's never going to happen for you that's that's just real talk okay oh. You, you guys are hundred percent right, and also I was hundred percent kidding. I would I would never ever quit this job. It's the best thing that ever Great. happened to me. So, Chase, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, no, I'm so happy I got to get on. Um, Alice in Wonderland, you have been really helpful, and I really appreciate it. Lyle, thank you. You're the best, and I love watching you, man. Hey, appreciate you, Chase. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. See you, dude. I like that guy. I hope you know. Motiv- Here's the thing about motivation, about feeling fired up. It it only lasts for yeah, so long. Yeah. So if you're still watching tonight, oh yeah, just fucking make, make something. Even if it sucks and you don't like it, just make it. I wish I would have asked him what he wants to make. We're going to assume it's hentai. I did assume it was hentai. Well, because I feel like here's the thing: is I feel Tentacles. like if, if you have a jo- if you have a <laughs> job like Doctor, Su- I'm about to say something that is probably made up, but. The cool thing about being on a podcast is that you can just say stuff That's... without having to fact check any of it. I'm pretty sure Dr. Seuss <laughs> made like fuck. He made like fucked up like sexual cartoons. He did? And stuff. I think so. Because like and, I, and that make, it makes sense. Like if you're like if you like make work like, like he does with like in like children's yeah, stuff, yeah, like yeah. everything you make is like all wholesome and like yeah. nice. You're like you need a catharsis for all your like fucked up ideas you know what that's it's why so i assumed true. he's making weird but that's true shit. because everyone that i've met in my life that outwardly do really fucked up things are the most chill normal people interesting it's yeah because so they're weird. getting it out there yeah 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 in some way like we all have outlet. it we all have it yeah and like i you know like people i'm really close to when i first met them th- their career was blah blah and then i'd be like oh god this person's fucked in the head for sure and can I, just normal. Can I? Can I? Can we talk about the uh, thing you were telling me about when we were walking from here to the studio? Or do you not want to talk about that? What was it? it was the Kermit stuff? How much I love Kermit? Oh yeah. Okay. Like you told me you had like an album of Kermit. Oh yeah, photos. I have an album of Kermit fucked up Kermit photos on my yeah. phone. Yeah. And I look at them a lot. Like my friends only send me Kermit pictures. Like literally, there's there's like. They're really offensive. It though. was like it was like Miss Piggy like sucking his dick. And yeah, shit, Miss Piggy's right? sucking his dick. Like him, like with his dick out. Him like snorting cocaine. Yeah. Like him, like bondage, like tied up to a bed with like. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like really muscly Kermit. There's cowboy Kermit. Um, there's one. Do you know Goatsy? Is that a, who is that? It's a meme. Don't Google it. It's where a guy is bent over spreading his butthole. Don't Google it. I want to Google it. G O T. I think it's G O A T S. Goat. People. Goat people C. who know what this is. Gonna be... Go oh, on Urban Dictionary. Oh, I. See. <laughs> 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 it's just for for. Does uh, I don't even want to look at, but. There's I have a Kermit doing that, but he's like a puppet. Yeah. So he's bent over and his hands are like <laughs> spreading open the puppet hole. Yeah. Um, that's my one of my favorites. Where do you find these pictures of Kermit's butthole? <sighs> Honestly, when I <laughs> like 
Imagine like my search history is just like <laughs> naked. Yeah, the Kermit FBI has definitely got a tab on. <laughs> I just genuinely Google like weird Kermit or fucked up Kermit or like alt Kermit. It's just like there's so many things that people have made with Kermit that I like. It's he's become this thing to me that just brings me so much joy because mm-hmm. he's lived so many lives. And you know, it makes it kind of to the same thing. I mean, Kermit, very wholesome, family friendly show, the Muppets show. He's has probably fucked up things. That's, That's what why I'm he saying. wants to get like tied up. That's why he wants to do Kermit's all this cocaine. He's dirty. hiding it. Yeah. Within. But I feel like a lot of people, when you're in a, like, you, you'll you notice this in, with, you know, when you watch a documentary of someone, and they always, it's always because they're, like, so controlled or, like, they're not, yeah. you know what that's I'm saying? Why, that's why Kermit uh, needs to let loose a little bit. Kermit. We, we need Kermit at the rave. Uh, shall we talk to Sydney? Yeah, that's where I'm from, so let's do it. Good night. Hello? 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 <laughs> Oh my gosh, hi. <gasps> hi. How are you? Is this Sydney? This is she. Oh my Hello. gosh. I have been calling for months. I can't believe I got in. Oh my uh, gosh. <laughs> Sydney, I'm here oh with God. Alice in Wonderland. We're hanging out. We're taking phone calls. What's uh oh my gosh. How, how can we how can I we saw, get you this I evening? I saw you at Hard Summer in 2019 and you were fantastic. Oh um, my god, thank you. <laughs> um they're talking about you. Um, <laughs> I was like, where was that? Oh. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> um, Love you. <laughs> okay. So my last like two months, month and a half have been absolute hell. Um, so my boyfriend of like two and a half years decided to do the exact same thing my ex-fiance did, which was, um, I'm not against it. I just don't feel that a person in a relationship with me should do this. Um, Mm -hmm. But he decided to buy OnlyFans photos. So Mm -hmm. that was super cool. And then he lied to me about it Mm -hmm. or tried to lie to me about it. Um, So then I made the decision to pack up my car and move to Texas. And I drove um, like 1,300 miles by myself in like 24 hours. And now I'm here and now I don't know what the hell to do. See, this is what I'm talking about. We're not being scared. I respect it. So did, yeah. can I, I just, I'm kidding. Did you guys like set a boundary of some kind where you were like, because there, there is, I think, you know, and every relationship, you know, you make your own rules. And for some people, they don't care if their partner yeah. watches yeah, exactly. porn or like does OnlyFans so, stuff. But did you guys have like a set thing of like. You felt uncomfortable. Like, you felt uncomfortable you know, with you it? Felt, yeah. we, we very much did. We very much did. So my um, ex-fiance so, ooh, okay, my ex that we just broke that just broke, ooh, haha, sorry, I'm really nervous. I know it goes away. No, I'm don't, no, for don't it. worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so when, before my ex fiance and I like officially like broke up, broke up, well, no, no, before I moved out because found out that he was cheating on me right at the beginning of the pandemic and then I got stuck in Oregon for like six months. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Wait, is this um, the same guy as ex-fiance. Oh, was ex-fiance? Okay. Yeah. Ex-fiance. No. So ex-boyfriend mm-hmm. okay. um, was, so we like, kind of started talking towards like the last month of me living in Oregon. So he knew everything that was going on. Like okay. he knew what I wasn't okay with. Like those boundaries mm-hmm. were very much set. Like he came from a very damaged relationship as well. So we both like were very, very, um, verbal about our like our boundaries and stuff like for him his ex was bringing guys into the house that they lived together in for like a whole year so like Mm -hmm. i knew that he was very like protective about people like coming into the house and stuff luckily i don't really have people over anyway so like that wasn't an issue so like he knows that i'm very touchy about like phones i guess like social media and stuff because like Uh all of that but Yes, it's a, it's a trigger. We're very much set. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. Can I, just, can I just say, I love your accent so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so much. It's great. You were, te- you were telling me beforehand about how you worked, like when you moved to America, you worked very hard to, to yeah, keep Yeah, I, I worked hard not to have any type of American yeah. sneak into my accent. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you, <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Um, oh my gosh. No, so, so, keep it, keep it. It's. 
fantastic. <laughs> okay. So Sydney, so okay, so I mean jumping to where we are now. Okay, so you had a set thing, he broke the set thing, you mm -hmm. cut it off, and then you claim that you uh uh just straight up packed your stuff, moved to Texas. What can I ask uh generally where you moved to Texas from? Um, so I moved from San Diego to like in between Austin and San Antonio. Okay, and, the, and you say you moved without a plan, so you didn't, do you have a, a are you sleeping in a place right now? Or are you, do you have a gig <laughs> yes. of some so kind? Luckily, what's, what's your so deal? My grandma, my grandma lives out here, um, but she's kind of getting up there in age, so I don't really know how, it's a really shitty thing to say, but like, her and You're I were You're sneaking yourself into the it, will. Like Oh no! I'm her first. I'm her firstborn grandchild, and I'm the first. So she has two sons, and I'm the first uh, girl. So mm -hmm. she basically calls me her daughter. Like, oh yeah. Okay. This is All a right. Woman so who you're you're in me. already. So you're her little girl. You don't need to do that. Oh, yeah, so, oh yeah. One thing oh, no. I will like, say. She, she literally calls me her true love. Yes. Yes. Aww. Okay. One thing I will say is that you having those boundaries and having the self respect of leaving something and the strength that wasn't serving you in a positive way is really amazing mm -hmm. and strong and, and cool. And I think that it takes a lot for, of, of self value to, to, to do that. And I think it's, I think if you have given that person um, boundaries, especially because of the trauma you would have felt with, with your ex fiance and this guy knew all about it. Mm -hmm. Not only would something like that be completely disrespectful to you, um, he he betrayed your trust, um, and also mm -hmm. that's not going to make you feel very good about yourself. So, I think that you making that actual move to to do that shows that you have a lot of strength and self respect, and I really think that's cool. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would be. Cry. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people Thank would be you. very scared to do that. I really do. Um, oh, yeah. No, I cried for the first, like, six hours. Like, this is... so. Damn, I would be, like, six years. The biggest <laughs> reason that... <laughs> the biggest reason that I came out here was because... So, my parents... I couldn't move back into my parents' house because I don't want to give up my dog. Okay. Mm. So, Aww. my grandma was like, come here. Bring your dog here. So Great. Nice. Nice. It's and, good and, that you had a place uh, to go to. Yeah. How far are you from, like, Austin and stuff yeah. like that? Um, like, 45 minutes. Great. So, not You're too chilling. bad. You're chilling. Like I honestly think... So? Yeah. What's the plan now with work? Um, so, my grandma actually wants me to go, like, into a trade school. Great. But... I've been working in restaurants for the past 10 years, so I have no idea what the hell I want to do. <laughs> like, well, so, I know that I'm really good with my hands, but that's it. <laughs> right. I mean, so, so you say your grandma wants you to go to trade school and you've been working in restaurants. But, you know, aside from like what you've done in the past and what, you know, people in your life are telling you what you should do, like, you know, when you really kind of think about yourself and what you enjoy, what, what is it that you are leaning in the direction of? I know that I really, really love dogs, like, a lot more than a normal person does. Like, I have over 4,000 screenshots of dogs in my phone. Um, <laughs> Hopefully not what Kermit's like doing. I was, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, what, what do we think of, like, do, could you, like, fucking be a dog walk? I can think of the 10 jobs, like, dog what, what walking. About, do you have to, with, like... I don't know how shit how, how, though. That's the issue. I worked you... in I worked in vet med for about a year and that is the hardest job I've mm -hmm. I think anybody not anybody obviously really. there's a lot harder job. What what, what were you, but what emotionally, were you say? that job Yeah. Me? Oh, oh. I was talking to Alice. Um Oh, no. go ahead. <laughs> what if you um this is one thing that I have wished that there were more of good services for this. I know you can make really good money doing this, but what if you looked after like long-term, uh, you know, if someone's going away for me, I go away a lot. Right. And my dog is my, my mm -hmm. joy. It's like the love. She's the love of my life. Aww. 
I cry at 3 a.m. thinking about what's – because she's getting old. It upsets me. But oh, I go away no, sometimes. No, no. No, no, I know. We don't, we don't put it out <laughs> yeah. there. We love Molly. And yeah. um, so oh. Molly's my dog, by the way. Let's just clear that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, uh, yes. Yes. I, wish, <laughs> I, I wish that there were better people in L.A. that would look after your dogs. I don't trust that many places to look after mm-hmm. my dog. Mm-hmm. And there's been some really bad experiences yeah. that I know people have had. And, you know, long-term boarding is such a – I don't know you, if you need to go it's to trade school for that hard, at all. It's hard on the dog. Yeah, you can do a little kennel on service. The dog. So boarding, yeah, kennels and stuff. So I worked in grooming for a while that also, like, did boarding and stuff. And that's just, like, an entry level. Um, but the thing with that is it's not, like, a super – like, obviously, it's stable, but it's not going to be, like, super stable long-term kind of thing. Right. Um, plus, like, it also depends on if, like, the – I call them paw rinse, dog owners. <laughs> paw um, so It depends if the, the paw rinse are um, yeah. up to, like, the their dog being at, like, my house or if they want me to stay at their house because then I also have to worry about my dog getting along with their dogs and everything. He's a, yeah. he's a dog's dog, but – Right, 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 that. right. I mean, but, no, I'll like, mm, what makes yeah, what I would wish really that I could find too. was if someone could take my dog and love her like they love their own dog, you know, mm. for a week or whatever. Oh, and yeah. then she sleeps yeah. with them in the bed. And, you know, there's like a personal thing. Oh, where you, she gives cuddles. Oh. oh, yeah. She's very clingy. Oh, but geez. I'm just saying that oh, could be a it. thing you could do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely be looking into basically anything dog related right now. <laughs> well, you know, Cindy, listen, before we go, it's just to, just to reiterate right out what Allison said, I think it is a yeah. tough thing to, uh, you know, evaluate your uh, position in your life and mm-hmm. uh, 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 decide it needs to be changed and then go through the difficult decision to change it and uh you know we commend you for doing that man and, and i really wish you cool. the best of luck uh honestly and landing on your feet just shows you're really strong for real and is, growing pains is there know? anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go sydney um be kind and keep an eye on others like if you see a single mom in the parking lot struggling with the car seat just keep an eye out kind of thing also smile um thanks for everything that you do Hey, no, thanks for everything you do, things. man. <laughs> hey, thank you, Sydney. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. It was nice. Love her. Honestly, yeah. it took me years to do that. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm like, you're cool. Yeah. It's, well, it's a tough thing because you, eva- you can evaluate your... The scariest thing is when you're evaluating where you're at in life yeah. and the results of your evaluation prompt you to have to do something difficult because then yeah. you are like hmm how can i manipulate these evaluation results so that i don't have yeah. to do anything you difficult? make you, you like how can i lie to myself it. a little yeah. bit or justify so i i i can't say how much respect i have for someone that does that because it you know before i it's, it's like a self-value thing and man that's cool that she did that yeah yeah, yeah. I've had, like, we've had a lot of callers kind of recently on the show who who have uh had gone through that whole yeah. process. Right. You know. Respect to any of you that have the guts to get up and leave, not after like the 10th, 11th, 12th time, because it's hard. It's really hard when you're stuck in there. Shut the fuck Hello. up. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, CJ. How are you? I'm sorry. <laughs> they have nothing to apologize for that I know of. Oh, my God. What's, uh, what's going on with you, CJ? Um, sorry, I am totally flabbergasted. I did not think this was going to happen today. No, do you need a um, second? Do you want to take a breath? Yeah, give me one second. Take a breath. Okay. Hang out. Okay. <laughs> um, we're here. We're here with, uh, I'm a gecko. Allison, I'm here know. with Allison. She's a gecko as well. We're yeah. two geckos. We're talking to people on the phone. We're yeah. hanging out. What's up? What's going on, CJ? Oh, yeah. So I'll kind of tell you what I told the call screener, but like, yeah, please. I'm trying to hook up with my coworker, 
But I can't tell if he's really like vibing with it or not because there's a lot of layers to like maybe why he wouldn't vibe with it, you know? What's Even the Even though layers? he said he would. So he said he said he would hook up with you to you? Yes. So, so like do you want me to like explain a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. What are, what are, what are these layers that are causing friction with this? Um, okay. So I have a fiance and <laughs> it's totally consensual for me to hook up with other people. Oh, like okay. He knows okay. all about this and everything. I- so it's not like I'm doing this behind their back or anything. Sure. Chill. Um, chill. We love that for you. But the coworker <laughs> But the coworker, he had a thing with one of our other coworkers, and it's still very like up in the air if they're gonna like get together or not. Mm, so now. it's pretty confusing. But yeah, would you be down to like fuck this guy just for your own satisfaction and stir the pot with this girl? Like, are you friends with this girl? No, I'm not. I only work there like. On the weekends, if anything, like maybe once a month. Can I, can I ask when you so say it's up? Job as well. When you say it's up in the air that they might get together, what exactly does that mean? So, from what I've been told of the situation, is basically like he liked her, and she liked him, and they were talking, and then she went away to school very far away. And said, like, I don't want to, like, have a relationship while I'm gone, you know? Okay. So, she said that, or, like, not that she didn't want to, that it was, like, a heavy, oh, maybe we'll get together. And is she coming back soon? Yeah. And that's, like, another thing is we're all supposed to go out as, like, a group this weekend. And she's going to be there. See, I, I, I would suss it out this weekend. I feel like, I mean, that's the thing about like having sex with your coworkers and shit is like, if things get weird, it's like now it's it's in it's infiltrated your day to day life. You have to see these people all the time. Like, uh, is this just a se- sexual thing for you, or is there feelings involved? Um, this is mostly just a sexual thing for me. Like, he's definitely my friend, and right. like. I have had, like, a little baby crush, you know? But then uh-huh. we, like, talked about, like, the dynamic of, like, kind of how this would go. And it just kind of solidified for me that, no, this would just be, like, you are my friend with benefits, you know? Do, do you think if you did this, if you're looking at long game and big picture and the other girl was involved, it would get messy if she found out? I I don't know because we recently talked about like her and him having a conversation and every time he tells me about her it seems like she's very uninterested in being with him and like she's trying to beat around the bush of letting him down. You know CJ I mean look this guy is single. It's up to him really. So, yeah this guy's single. You've got the green light. You're, you've got the green light. You're in an open relationship. I don't know. What's this girl? Why is this girl? She's all the way over in what Europe or something, and she's influencing <laughs> things going on over but here. Also, if she's not his girlfriend, and they haven't made a committed decision to be with each other exclusively. It's not up to you to make that decision. Yeah, and like I. Yeah, it, it is really up to, to him. It. Yeah. Yeah, like we've tried to like arrange actually, like you know, doing the deed and. Every time I, love like, that. I, I end up never. being busy. I'd be so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I end up being busy and then the next time I like bring it up, I'm like, I'm not busy right now. Like we could do it. And he's like, Yeah, but I'm just like going through it. Like about her. So I'm it's not like Ugh. I worry that if I like put it on too strong, he'll be like, Oh, but I'm so emotionally messed up now from like But doing you've, this you've given you him opportunity, then, right? Yeah. Ugh. CJ, can I say this? I, I, any like in this in the whole romantic sexual sphere of life, 
uh, when uh, things should be, you know, fairly clear. Yes. I hope that you are not losing mm -hmm. sleep over this. Yeah. Because this is like, this just sounds so annoying. It sounds good, like it's going to drain you. <laughs> yeah. To it's be just honest. like annoying. We and don't like, need that. don't, it, just don't waste time on it at the yeah, very least. Yeah. It sounds like he, okay. From what I'm hearing, is if he wanted to, he would. Oh yeah. Right? He and hey. he's maybe enjoying the attention that perhaps. you're giving him. That is perhaps. As a as a distraction from this girl. And I'm just Yeah. I I just think like you can do better. Yeah, go find like <laughs> go go, go, to, like, go find someone who's head. like, "Yes, I will like, sleep with you." Like be there in like, 5 minutes and thing. he's like, you yeah. know, be, you you want that. You want someone who like uh, it's too much effort for someone that you're not going to be in a relationship with. If it's just yeah, sex, way like, too much just, just go find, like, another dick. What do you What do you think about <laughs> all of that, CJ? I love that for you. You have I mean, options. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I have this weird thing whenever people are, like, too gung-ho about me that I'm like, it'll leave me alone. You know? Right, it's a like, turn off. some sort of attraction to the chase. Uh -huh. And I'm just, and I also enjoy the attention, though. Okay, you know? so are you? So, are, is are you both enjoying just fucking with each other? Maybe. Maybe you just have to stop chasing him and just like enjoy the attention, and then it's up to him, really. Honestly, at this yeah, point, you've given him so true. many opportunities. Um, CJ, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Live your life and have a good one. Hey, Hell you too, yeah. man. That's good. That's a good one. Hell yeah to CJ. I like CJ. That hurt my brain a little bit, though. I honestly was just like, if he wanted to, he would. Yeah. Straight up. And she deserves... Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. The the it, it was just a lot of it was just a lot of effort. Like she know, yeah. like it, she knew too much about that. She, yeah. to, about that girl. Like, too, why do we too, even know this? Too draining. Why do we know yeah. that she's what? What doesn't the fuck? That. It's just such a weird keep thing. Keep it simple. If it's going it to be like a sex thing, yeah. Again, clarity and keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. You know. How are you feeling, Allison? How are you enjoying being a gecko and talking to people I'm on the phone? Loving and living my life. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is great. Everyone's yeah. awesome. Everyone's been really cool. You know what I love about this? And, and you know, when I first started uh, doing this, I was like, I didn't even screen the calls. I was like, people are just going to call in and like yell things and not have uh -huh. actual conversations. But time and time again, we do this stream and people call in and they have things going on in their lives yeah. that they want to talk about. And you know what? You probably feel crazy before you say it. And then when you say it out loud and someone's like, I totally get what you mean. Yeah, people you in the feel, chat are like, holy shit, I feel this guy. You totally feel not alone anymore and validated. I'm actually so impressed that she was just like had that chat. with. I would never, I'd be so bad at that. At I've what? I've never been able to be like, yo, so would you hook up with me? Like I've never. Oh, with the guy or with yeah, her fiance? Just the guy. Like, no, no, not the, like the guy, like going up to someone in general and, and saying that like, to would me. Would you hook up with me? I could never. Never do. I, 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 I yeah, I respect no that she has the uh, the gusto, the gusto to like be forward about it. I'm it's sure the guy great. appreciates it too because it's good to like, know what people are thinking and feeling about things. There's no way I would be able to do it, I'd be terrible at it. Be like, so eggplant emoji question mark. Yeah, Mike. Hey, Lyle, Allison, how are you? Hello, what's up, dude? Not too much. I'm excited to be on. I didn't think this would happen. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, I, I never thought that I would be sitting here in a gecko suit. I don't think Allison ever thought she was sitting here in a gecko suit. But it's so the best thing that's ever happened to All me. three of us are currently existing in a situation we never thought <laughs> would ever happen. So we, we all share that in common. Um, what's going on with right? you, Mike? Yeah. yeah, well, speaking of things that we never thought would happen... Part of the reason I called today is because today I'm at a point in my life where I'm proud to say I've been sober for over five years. And six yes, years man. ago, Congrats. I was on. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, six years ago, I was like on the verge of death, didn't want to exist any longer. And so the fact that I'm here where I am now and I'm not going to give all the details 
and tell my whole story, but I'm kicking ass in life right now. I'm so proud of myself. My family relationships are incredible. My career has skyrocketed. But most importantly, I'm just like proud of me and who I am. Um, and I try my to best me. to use. Yeah. So, you know, I, I make efforts in like the sobriety and, and recovery community to help other people uh other younger men who have like had similar struggles and you know share a bit of my story and experience strength and hope to help them out um and in that realm i'm comfortable and then i have like the career world like the professional people mr business and mrs business people where i almost feel like i have to hide a bit of myself because when i'm at work i've had the same job for seven years there's not many people left that even knew I was struggling with alcoholism that even had any idea something was going on. So at the workplace and in another side business I do, many people just know I don't drink. And usually when that comes up or a drink is offered to me, I just say, Hey, I'm not interested. Like not my thing. And usually they're like, Oh, cool. And they just assume it's because they know I'm into working out or they just think I'm being healthy or whatever it may be. But so is, um, is, is this, aspect of your life something that you are are afraid of talking to people about or 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 ashamed of people knowing you know what in the last i'd say i don't know not putting a to a concrete time on it but in the last two years i've been i i turned uh, a corner where like when i get to know new people one of the first thing i'll tell them is that i don't drink and i don't know why that changed but it, it feels important to tell people and i'm proud of it but mm-hmm. the part that is difficult to discuss and where I like why I'm here on this call, reaching out to, for some help and guidance is, is in my drinking, I caused a lot of wreckage. I like family for a, year, for a while didn't want anything to do with me. And I, I got three DUIs and anyone in the U.S. Know what that, knows what that means. You lose your license for 10 years. So people that meet me now can't even fathom that that's something that's going on with me. So I have like a quote unquote professional job. And, you know, if you look at people don't think alcoholic when they see me and that lack of having a license has been preventing, has been holding me back. And it's like, it's a personal battle more so than anything, because I'm not afraid to tell people I don't drink, but when there's a social engagement or something going on and it involves driving or I need a car to get there, I keep finding myself making excuses to not go because I'm afraid someone's going to find out or ask what, like find out I don't have a, have a car or ask like why I'm not driving. And I don't have a good answer for that as a, so you're, you're afraid that people will find out about the three DUIs. Right. And okay. So a perfect example, microcosm of this is last Friday, some friends from work went out and it sounded like a good time. I was, game to go out and uh experience this for them and uh it was but then when they told me the location it was like 40 minutes in the wrong direction away from work and i didn't like there was no public transportation Mm -hmm. that was a good option and ubering is always an option too but i was like oh they're gonna see me pull up in an uber and call for an uber on the way home and they're gonna Mm -hmm. ask that Mm -hmm. question so so, so give us a second, Allison, I, you seem like you have some thoughts. So many thoughts. Firstly, congratulations. Again, I was very intimately close with an addict for a many amount of years who is now sober yeah. and amazing. But during that time, did a lot of damage and was a completely different person. And I was literally right next to them the entire time whilst they were in that and recovering. So I understand how difficult sure. that is. And I honestly think you're incredibly strong and fucking cool for that for sobering up and getting your life together because it's very difficult and i've seen it firsthand and and it was actually really hard for me to i had to go to al anon to deal with Mm. my side of it because you know you have to forgive that and and so i think there's like a lot of heaviness when you think about the reason why you can't drive associated with why you can't drive i don't think it's actually the fact that you, you can't drive because um to be honest, I don't fucking drive in this country at all. I take Ubers everywhere because I don't. <laughs> I, it, it, um, but I think because I think there's like just a trauma and, and and maybe like something that you don't even realize that's like associated 
with the narrative of you not driving that's making you feel embarrassed when again everyone i doubt firstly is going to notice that you're taking an uber or question it if you're going on a night out it doesn't matter even if you don't drink and i think um it's you also don't owe anyone an explanation you set your own boundaries for that if they do ask and they yeah. should be able to respect that and i think just knowing that you like yes that is something that, that happened and it's 10 years because you had three three duis and, and and you don't don't have a license anymore but focusing on that one negative compared to the amazing positives that you've just told us that are like incredible and not many people get to recover like that is like maybe limiting you a little bit yeah do, do you know I what i mean can't disagree yeah like, and i think like I, yeah i think it's not a it's a big deal in your head because you associate it with such a dark time in your life but outwardly i really don't think that people are thinking like that because it's not their experience. Now I feel that I know my mind jumps to the worst possible outcome of them saying, look in my Googling my name and seeing that DUIs come up and that that, that is irrational, right? Like I, I, I get that as I'm saying it to you, but, but even sometimes if they in did, the moment. Yeah. But even if they did, you go, yeah, yeah. okay. But now I work with the community I've turned my entire fucking life around. I've been sober for five years, and um, it was a, it was being rock bottom changed my life for the better. Like, that's a you can turn that into a positive. It's actually not a negative thing if you've gotten out of it. It's actually so inspirational more than you realize. I appreciate that coming from you, or from anyone really, but. Uh... Yeah, I, I need to hear that again and again and again because I, I my self talk sometimes talks me in the wrong direction. But yeah, you know, right now I'm 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 feeling pretty good about that, you know. And uh, I got to practice, you know. I think if I just do it more often, it'll get easier. Again, and and no so, one, if you're honest, firstly you don't have to you don't don't owe anyone anything. But secondly, if you're honest, and I mean this is a success story. It's not a fail story. It's amazing. Yeah. So, you know. No, yeah, it's true. I, I, I'm worried that, you know, I'm worried about the perception of DUIs and criminals like I'm a bad person. But really, you're right. Like, I, I just need to put myself out there. If they don't take me for who I am, then that's that, that's their loss, I guess. You know, I got to. Well, you know, look, well. Mike, I, Mike, I think in thinking about, uh, you know, criminality and thinking about, you know, labeling yourself as bad or good is um, is is. is a little unproductive and i think you know where you stand on the earth at this moment uh the past does not necessarily have to define you and i think uh in terms of what you desire to do moving forward uh should be unaffected by anything in your past so you know if you were to label yourself as bad you prevent yourself from moving forward positively, which is a, a travesty to to the world because we want more people to uh, try to move forward positively. And um, yeah, I just hope that you, uh, you know, feel empowered to do that. What is it exactly, you know, uh, moving forward in your life that you want to do? Uh, I want to raise a family and, uh, you know, help protect the environment and create a si okay. safe stable society but uh yeah in my professional career i'm in a position where i can help reduce the impact of of my industry on you know, the environment and that's the career sustainability. goal sustainability doing that mm -hmm. heck yeah we love a sustainable king yeah. what um, the hell you're honestly right. killing it yes <laughs> and honestly Chair of the set boundaries sustainability committee at work <laughs> you, you, that's amazing but you know what you should do if you are struggling to uh you know keep practicing and telling yourself what you could do is set boundaries and like almost write yourself like a little script of what you are okay with saying you know just for yourself yeah and then when someone says like you you have it have you seen the rehearsal nathan yeah, fielder of course, yeah. <laughs> like you know just yeah, kind yeah. of prepare yourself a little bit so that when that comes because inevitably it probably will just say that and again 
I promise you right now, if you told someone even 10% of what you told us, they would think you're dope as hell. Ah, I appreciate that. I've let a couple like, of bad experiences or bad conversations jade my, my thought processes, but you guys, you're helping me set my mind right on the right track. Love it. Mike, yeah. is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer or to me or Allison before you go? Sure. Real quick, Allison, your music has been the theme song to my recovery over the last few years, ever since I discovered your music. Thank you for being you and for sharing your experience. Uh, that's, I, I couldn't tell you, I'm the only one in my friend group that listens to you, and and, and it's my thing. You, earlier in the show, you talked about things that are yours and not something you do with your friends. I, I The first time I saw you live, was by myself and I was perfectly happy going by myself and that's like I, I heard that when you started the show off like that and I just went to Red Rocks with my brother who wasn't trusted to be with me uh, alone when I was in my drinking and I took him to Red Rocks uh, sober and you know my family was happy that you know it was a brother experience and then for anyone out there I just if you're struggling with something ask for help ask your family ask your friends ask a therapist ask two people dressed up in gecko costumes because having the willingness to like ask for help is the only way you can recover and overcome anything you know you're never alone if you just have that willingness it's the hardest part but just ask anyone for help and something will stick and it'll help you get on move on to the next thing you like. thank you very much you're for calling make, you're gonna make me cry <laughs> Have a uh, have a have a good rest of the night and keep uh, keep on keeping yeah, on. Yeah, we love you. Hell yeah, you rule. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> take love care, you brother. guys too. I'll take care. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. You know, <laughs> like, this is this is. Uh, I'm like, don't cry. <laughs> do you do you do you have a lot of opportunities where you get to like really talk to your fans? Because yeah. my whole thing is like talking to yes. the people who listen. to I'm the very view. close with my fans. Cool. Very close cool, with them. Cool. Yes, they're my family. You know, he, Mike has an interesting. Thing, and he has a thing that I think about a lot lately. I think societally we are very obsessed with uh, labels. Yes. This person is bad. This person is good. Yes. This person is this. This person is that. For And for whatever reason, justifiably so, you might have to apply that label. And, you know, people are compelled to apply those labels because those people do things that elicit very emotional reactions well it's also just now especially in the age of social media everything's so instant right instant opinion instant gratification instant definition it's like way more labeled than it ever has been i feel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh you know mike is, is is struggling with uh delabeling himself so that he can as a human body on the universe right now move forward productively and which I, is what honestly, we want. Sounds like he's doing that, which yeah. so many people struggle with. So it's so cool. Makes me like even yeah. He he. It was very a very familiar uh, story and mm -hmm. like t close to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, yeah, no, I get it. And no one should judge you for when you're trying to change. It's it's probably very hard. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I uh, yeah. It's a big it's a big thing. I guess I guess we're trying to hoeing in on that i feel like it's so easy to get all pissed off all the time oh my gosh it's so easy i get pissed off oh my god all the time what was the last thing that really pissed you off <laughs> I, I my manager drove me today here because i don't drive <laughs> and he was vaping in the car yeah and i lost my shit and i was, he was like well the air conditioning's on. i'm like nah you know, I don't. I don't vape, but I, I like when other when people around me vapes because I you can like, like the smell. Yeah, I like when someone has a fucking like Captain Crunch vape or something. No. I'm, I'm into that. It was so ke chemically, and I was like, Ugh, like get it the fuck away from me, bro. Okay. Look at my feet. Do you think that I could go on OnlyFans with feet? And yeah. So uh, then you you I, I then you'd be diluting my OnlyFans market because what I, if we I, did a joint feet a pick? joint feet pick gecko OnlyFans? Yeah, there has to be there's, someone. There's something in the works with that. I feel like there's always someone that there's one person at least one person in the world that like jerks off to gecko feet. Hello. Hello. Hi, is Hello. this Dawn? Hello. This is Dawn. Dawn, how Hi. are you? Good, good. How are you guys? Are these Dr. Geckos? How are you tonight? 
We're good. Doing pretty Doctor. good. Dawn, um, look, it says here that uh, you have an 18-year-old son who uh, I do. you say refuses to get a job and needs motivation. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? That is that is one hundred correct. <laughs> okay. Do you do you uh, want to go into this with in your own words? Um, sure. I'll give you a little bit of background. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, he's almost he'll be nineteen in December. He's graduated high school about two years ago now. He's with a GED. He went and did it online um, during COVID and has gotten very complacent with staying at home and not being social and doesn't have any friends anymore and now it's time to get a job and he's just (laughs) doesn't he's not going out he has a lot of anxiety i think too about it but he's always been a social person before all this happened so it's i'm not sure where to go with him with with it it's he's just anything we've tried he wants to do therapy but um, wants to do in person, which is hard because he gets very particular with therapists and won't talk to people. So I need some advice. <laughs> well, the fact that he's open to going to therapy is amazing. Honestly, I think that's a really good positive. Yeah. And I think letting him know that he's understood and like not alone in feeling a little changed from the pandemic when we're all alone and kind of forgetting how to be social I think a lot of us went through that so again like that is something that you should remind him and I don't know I just remember my dad kicking me out of the house your dad kicked you out of the house when you were 18 he was like time to go time to leave the nest really I love it I'm glad he did it I love my dad do you are you suggesting that Dawn kick her son out of the house my dad literally (laughs) went time to leave the nest (laughs) what what were you gonna say Dawn he just moved out with my ex-husband, um, so he's not with me, but he is with his, his my ex, um, with his dad, which is a good situation. They have a nice new house, and, and he's remarried now, but again, he's just in his room now, in the basement, um, not being social, not getting a job, uh, same pattern that he's had for the last couple of years, and does he play you games? Know, we, like, what does he do in the basement? Um, I mean, he has his own room down there. This is a, a new house. It's a nice big house, but like video games, it's mainly video games. He had a girlfriend for the last four, almost five years. And she really? Broke up what, with him, right? What happened so, there? <laughs> they were. He was they moving because he was. Um, it was probably about four weeks ago. And then he moved two weeks after that, about an hour and a half away from me and uh, where his girlfriend is, too. Uh, she lives in this area. But so now he's a little bit further from everybody with his dad and I think yeah. feels more secluded when, you know, want therapy. He's reached out. But, you know, now he's 18. I can't make appointments for him anymore. And he won't call to make any. But yeah, you know, prop, props to you, Don, because you're really, I mean, he's 18. If you really wanted to, you could be like, hey, figure it out yourself, kid. But you're like a real so mom my, here. My you're dad really, was like, figure it out yourself. Yeah, kid. I mean, I, I really commend you for, I mean, you're clearly putting in the effort here. But I also, I mean, clearly, I'm not sure he's what, but he, so- yeah, he's your baby. Okay. And he probably right. has like <laughs> depression or anxiety, honestly. And to be and and when you're feeling oh, like that, it's it's really hard to like motivate yourself to pick up a phone and call a therapist. It's really hard. And right, has he opened up to you about like if he has any mental health concerns? Yes, he's very, he's always had a very open relationship. He's come out before that he was bisexual. Why? four years ago you know, to me has talked to me openly about things. You know, he's had a girlfriend for the last couple of years as well, but you know, openly says he's you know open to any type of relationship in the future. And, you know, so he's a very open-minded person. He's got you know, a good head on his shoulders. It's just this whole anxiety. I think about going out into public again and, and, and being with 
the population. <laughs> he doesn't like going to the store anymore. He won't go to the movies. He won't go out and eat dinner. He he won't go do anything publicly. And I'm not sure why. <laughs> and that you know, changed just, in the last like two years? It was before the pandemic a little bit as well, you know, and then I think that just made it worse. <laughs> Have you spoken you know. to his girl, well, now ex-girlfriend, but did she ever mention anything to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, they were, they're, they were both young, you know, they were high school sweethearts, so they were all through high school together and young love. <laughs> yeah. That's what I talk all relationship up to because it's, you know, a little love notes here and there, and it's, it was young love. So, so but, is yeah, he, they went back and is he trying to do, is he trying to get a job or go to college or anything at all? No, he talks about it. I want to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to go out. His dad's going to take him out tomorrow. They'll, they'll go around town or go online, look for jobs. You know, I'll call and him he just, does, He's just always talking about it, but never Thanks. doing it. Yep. I mean, yep. the amazing thing that and you that said about him is that he, yep. I, he sounds so self-aware, which I think is so rare for yep. someone that age, yep. which is a huge positive. Yep. Um, pers- from my personal thing, I don't know if this is correct, but you can't really force anyone to do anything until they're yeah. ready to do it. Yeah, I was going to say that. This is really tough. Anytime anyone, you know, calls into this and is talking about something, you know, whatever the relationship is, mother, son, uh, you know, boyfriend, friend, whatever. It is, it's so, so difficult, these kinds of situations, because, like, you clearly care. You care enough to call in to talk to two geckos about it. You care enough that you're invested in your son's life. But it's so fucking hard because it doesn't matter how much you care and it doesn't matter how much you try and it doesn't matter what you say but at the end of the day whether you're his mother whether you're whatever you can't make anyone do anything it's a tough just fact of life that you have to accept and so i think that you i mean for your own personal sanity dawn you know i think you provide as much support as you can you <laughs> let him know that you're there for him and then at the yeah. after you've and done so all that bad. it's like That's you, you can't point. when he's eight you can't drag him into his life and it's a tough thing to accept yeah. but I, I think but you are honestly being such a beautiful caring person to him and for him to be so self-aware at that age like oh my god when i was 18 i didn't even i was like definitely not <laughs> that not that yeah. <laughs> like I was yeah you know, um, I, know. But I think also at that age you're just so lost and there's so many th- I think there's just like a lot going on in the world right now mm-hmm. um yeah. so I, th- I think just being supportive and trying to encourage I mean one thing I I thought about is what if you and his uh father and, and his um wife got together and and spoke about it together like a little intervention even thing. just with the three of yeah, you, I think it might be intimidating with your kid. That might be something in the future that we can do. Me and my ex have a better relationship now. We were married yeah. 22 years and divorced for almost six now. So we have a better relationship now than we did the 22 years we were married. So <laughs> Love we that. talk, you know, a lot <laughs> yeah. it now. So that's, his wife and I have met many times, you know, I've, so that wouldn't be a problem to be able to do something like that if it and I think in the future that needs to happen because I don't want to see him keeping this up for another year and another year because it it goes by so fast mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Um, I think on honestly to from- yeah I think well if it makes you feel better I was a freaking idiot when I was 18. Oh my God. Well, it's a tough thing. I mean, that's the thing is if, listen, here's the thing is if the next, you know, if this year, next year, the year after that don't work out for him, you know, he's, he's, he's not out of hope yet. He's got plenty, plenty more years left on this earth to be a human being. So it might yeah. just take him a little yeah. bit longer, but, but it sounds you know, like he has a, a stable, uh, support network around him, which is amazing. And honestly, it might be worth just, calling your ex-husband up and and his wife and being like hey guys what should we do and like 
coming up with a little plan together. If he can't, if he's got too much anxiety to to call a therapist or find a therapist, because I think actually making that first step is really difficult. I think if he finally decided to do it, it would be easier. But just that first, you know, step into that is is hard. So I don't know. Maybe um, just talking to the family and getting some support for that. Dawn, That's a very um, great. Great suggestion. Dawn, is there any other um, you know aspect of this that you feel like we didn't cover, or or anything else that you you want to say to me, Allison, or the people at the computer before we go? Um, no, you guys have been actually wonderful. It was my first time calling in, and you, oh, yeah, yeah, first time calling in, and it, it picked up right away, and I got right through to you, so it was meant to be. <laughs> that was, yeah, thank you. Talk of to course, people about it, yes. <laughs> of course. Uh, good luck to you and, and to your son. And, uh, you know, I, we appreciate you, you know, clearly showing a lot of care. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Geckos. You've been awesome. Have a good night, Dawn. Yeah. What were you Thank like? Thank you. At, you um, too. See ya. What were you like at 18? What was I like at 18? Uh, let's see. What was I doing? I was like doing... A lot of stand up. I was making movies. I was playing. You were making movies? Yeah, I was like making little movies with my friends. That's what Sick. I did in high school. What and kind stuff. of stuff? Like, like little like comedy shorts and sh- like short films. We would like enter film festivals and shit. Really? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I want to see them. You want to see them? Yeah. Look, I'll send you one. Of them. They're all really? my. You know what's funny is they're all on every like the YouTube channel that like I'm gonna post this on. Yeah. If you're watching this right now on youtube.com slash Lyle Forever and you go to my videos and you sort by oldest, all of the shit that I made in high school is still up on this channel. Does I never, it, I didn't like take it Do people know down. that or is this like a world exclusive? No, I, th- I think people, I mean, it's, I don't, I don't like, I don't like promote it, but it's there. That's you know. fucking cool. I, occasionally I'll get like a comment on old videos that's like, this is the Gek before he was the Gecko. And I'm like, hell yeah. I'm glad people are finding that stuff. Whoa, that's it is crazy! Very like, you were writing as well, like writing the films and yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, so sick! Yeah, yeah. That's that was so sick. Yeah, it was. I had a, I had a good, I, and it was. I did it with all my friends and all the people I made those movies with. I'm still really good friends oh, with. Today. I love that. So whoa, yeah, yeah. I, I've had a, I've had a nice life. We, I feel like I love that for you. Thanks, Allison. Like, what a great. Gecko. Thank you. He turned out to be. Thank well, you. I'm gonna go watch them honestly tonight. You like, should, please. When I when I can't sleep, I go through YouTube and I just like watch people's. Like, I go deep in their channels. Go actually. watch if you're gonna watch anything. Why? And if anyone listening to this is gonna watch an old movie of mine from high school, watch watch a passion for espionage. Ooh, I'm in. You can find that a passion for espionage. That's gonna be me tonight. Up. What 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 were you like when you were 18? <sighs> I was actually a classical cellist, and I was living in Europe. What? <laughs> yeah. You were a classical cellist? Yeah, I still play it uh, at Red Rocks. I was playing cellist. That's why I write strings and stuff. I love that for you because you went from, because you play like, mod, you play like elect, to me, like electronic music, that's like music of the fucking future. <laughs> and like to be a cellist, that's like oh, music the of polarity, the polarity, right? Yeah. It's very, very much, yeah, the polarity of that is um, interesting. Yeah, my entire background is I was a classically trained cellist. Um, really? And then came back and then went, fuck it. Like after studying and, you know, spending my entire life, eight hours a day doing scales, I went, I'm going to join a punk band. And I joined a punk band and I was like, fuck that. I'm going to make my own music on a computer where I can make all the sounds myself. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And that's how that happened. Do you still listen to punk music? Yeah. There's a there's a uh, there's an Australian punk band Who? that I really like. They're called, new? They're, yeah, I think they're new. Called? They're called Amel and the Sniffers. <gasps> I love them. They're She's great. So cool. She's so cool. I saw so her at cool. Coachella. Oh my god! I, I was like, these I guys never fucking met them, rock. But they fucking rock. They fucking rock. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like them. Yes. Shout out Amel and the Sniffers. We we like you guys yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I definitely I want to see them next time that they're. I think they were at. She's so cool. Group? She's got the craziest stage presence. Yeah, she's just just like walking, she's just like walking around, like fuck it, and like love that. Definitely there to rock. She looks cool. She does look very, very yeah. cool. She has like a good like the blonde. She's like, like a great voice. Yeah, for oh it. Yeah. yeah, everything. It's cool. I like it. Do you so from punk and cell- cellicism? 
cellicism. Do you incorporate any of those sounds into yeah, what you do now? 100%. Uh, there's a lot of strings in my songs, and it's usually me on cello. And when I, turn, like, when I talk about punk, like it's kind of just... I don't like to... Like, if my vocal, there's, like, some weird sound in it, I like to keep it in there. I mean, I don't know how punk that is, but, I mean, I think just being yourself these days is... Is very punk. I guess so, yeah. Do you still go to punk shows and, I like, used bang to. your head? And- I used to, um, until, like, maybe five years ago, and now I just sit at home and work on music. When you, go, when you go out places, like, you go to the music shows and yeah. stuff, do, a lot, do people come up to you and you're mm-hmm. like, holy shit, Alice in Wonderland? Yeah. How, in the, in how the is street that for as you? well. Um... It's fine. Like everyone, I actually tweeted on my side account today. Just like everyone I've met, usually like really, really fucking cool. That's nice and creative and great. And um, but that I remember when I was living in New Zealand last year for a little bit. Uh, I was <laughs> walking down the street with like literally, I can't explain. Like the most unshowered hair up in a pony. Mm-hmm. I'd been working on the album type thing. Mm-hmm. And I was walking to get cheese because I wanted to make myself a cheese platter. Oh, yeah. And this girl was walking down the street in Wellington in New Zealand. And I, I looked up and she was crying. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I didn't, it didn't, again, like my perception of me is I always forget that people You're might. a public person, yeah. I, I don't think about it. Right. And um, actually, it happened to me the other day. Someone came up and they're like, Allison? I was like. Yeah, and they went to hug me, and I was like, "Who do it?" And then I realized that people know you. Yeah, but I even didn't. If you don't know it, that. It, like, and I flinched, and I felt so bad because I just come out of acupuncture, so I was like, "Oh, uh, sure, um, sure." And then, uh, but yeah, it, it, she was crying, and I was like, Are you, "Just like, being a good civilian, I was just like, Are you okay? Like, do you need?'" Oh, you thought she was just like a yeah. girl in distress, and then she just randomly. Was like, Your song church like changed my life, and like started crying. I'm like, "Oh my god, no! You need a hug." And so we had like a really good hug. It's nice. And then actually at Red Rocks, I was freaking out because um, the truck broke down carrying my stage oh, and was no. only up an hour before the show. Yeah, that's, that's, It was yeah. like a fucking disaster. Yeah. Um, and so I was doing sound check when doors were opening. And so I was singing and, and checking my vocals. And there was a girl working at Red Rocks and, I, and I, I, I didn't know where to go. So I just walked up to her and then turned out she knew the song and we had like a big hug and it made me feel better so that's nice yeah that's nice everywhere you go you had you run into these like moments yeah i i'm really uh it's really nice i don't go out that i i myself sometimes have a little bit of anxiety going out and okay. going to parties so i'd like to are you not are you not a party person i not really and i when i did in the past it was you know i would be in the corner or okay. i just feel better behind the decks or alone in my room <laughs> what, what is it about the party environment that gives you anxiety i just don't think i'm naturally off stage uh, unless it's like one-on-one and like i feel a connection with someone sure, yeah. i don't really feel extroverted do you ever do you ever feel as though you have some type of like public persona that that you're pressured to like live up to? never okay good i never do like what you read on my twitter is 100 percent word vomit from my head to my mouth yeah i mean from my head to my fingers and, uh, you know, I'm very much like my songs are very much my words, my lyrics, mm-hmm. real experiences. There's really nothing about me that's not me. It's more just like I get overwhelmed when there's like a lot of s- things going on and okay. I'm not like, I don't know. You, you, do you feel like overstimulated sometimes? Mm-hmm. Very much. That's interesting. Cause I feel like the, the, the universe that you live in of like electronic music is all about stimulation yeah but when you're like hyper focused and you're in your zone it's not that sure, does that make right. sense yeah it does make sense when i'm taken out of it like even walking in a shopping mall or whatever um if it's like too loud or too many people or there's too many lights like i'm like ah. and um i don't know yeah i'm just kind of i think a lot of people are like that and they just don't talk about it what do you what do you do all the time do you like read books do you go Um, on the internet i stay it's actually a joke when the pandemic happened my parents joked that i was in heaven because i was alone in a room all the time (laughs) i i'm i'm always alone in a room you know i tour i'm a solo artist so it's it's just um kind of my comfort zone my comfort thing is being in like a small space in my head (laughs) There's, there's, uh, you know, this interesting, beautiful contrast of like one moment 
you're in front of what like 10,000 people at, at a show like Red Rocks or something and then you know there's all the stimulus just everyone and everything all mm -hmm. the time and then you afterwards sit in a little room yeah yourself. I actually can't really be around people afterwards it's really hard because I'm I'm so giving every single ounce of myself outward right. when I'm playing and I love it it's actually my fa it's the most I feel myself is when I'm doing that so either that or just like sitting in my studio it's like the most i feel myself ever what do you um, what do you do after a show how do you decompress i'm just like alone yeah i'm alone and like yeah it, my crew kind of jokes like i'm very easy she just, she just sits alone <laughs> i don't really do anything yeah um occasionally like i'll go to a party but um I can't really remember the last time I just went to a party. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if I want to see like one of my friends playing, like I love going to live music. That's always fine. Like, mm -hmm. and I actually like that I can wear a mask now and just kind of just kind chill. of vibe. Yeah. Um, but I love watching live music and, and going to visit, see my friends play. And, and you know, I, that's obviously what I'm passionate about. But um, if I was just at like a normal party, I'd just want to be behind the decks. Do you, do you, do you, you don't like, do you like to schmooze at all? No, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And it's been a huge, this is like my number one anxiety is I never am around backstage. People think I'm cold, but I just have anxiety. Like I mm -hmm. sit in my trailer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a terrible networker. Um, I find it really difficult to DM people or approach sure. people. I yeah. always have. I always like felt from my gut that if someone fucked with me, they would just like organically fuck with me. Sure. And I find it like really hard to put myself out there like that and try and sell myself. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's really doesn't seem genuine. And I, I really can't operate when something's not genuine. It's really difficult. And I have a terrible poker face. It's a joke as well. You can tell when I'm not in a, when I'm like not fucking with someone mm -hmm. and it's not, I'm never mean. I just like, I can't look them in the eyes. I can't like, well, it's an interesting thing you brought up of like you, you know, you saying that people think that you are cold sometimes, even though it's just anxiety. There's I just like, get nervous. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of I think like when people, you know, act a certain around way. a lot. Of, it's usually actually around artists when I'm meeting like no, like normal people, but like people that aren't in in the industry. It's 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 just like the backstage energy or the energy of people doing schmoozing for me. I my my intuition, my body can sense when things are not genuine. And look, there are so many amazing genuine people in the industry. So I'm not saying this is like a sure, yeah. but even just feeling that one time for me is like enough for me to leave the room. I can't be around it. It's really difficult and I get really like gross like not gross out. I just like energy wise I can't be around it. I don't know how to are explain you, it. Are you do you feel like you're good at reading people's very. intentions and energy yeah, and whatnot? Very. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's like really easy for me. I think that also just comes from life experience. I'm like, my intuition's always been strong, but like following it now and really listening to it, I'm really good at. Have you ever had been in a situation or had a time where you, your intuition was wrong? No. Never? No. Never? I mean, uh, it's funny. I've ignored my intuition and okay. then I've been right. Okay. You know, or, or like the thing where you say you make up a new narrative. Sure. To like convince yourself otherwise when you're dedicated to something. Sure, sure. So yeah, like it, it, my intuition's always been right and I should have fucking listened to it earlier. <laughs> but you know, whatever you learn, you live and you learn. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I try to, I try to follow my intuition sometimes, but I'm curious. I'm, I, I'm always checking my intuition cause I, I, I can never know everything. I mean, we don't know everything. That's why we try and ignore it sometimes. Mm -hmm. But your gut, your gut's very strong. We feel, we feel vi vibes. Really, you never like think about your gut intuition, and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I'm fucking wrong. All the time, like now, not so much. But yeah, like when I would change, like if someone doesn't feel right to me, I don't really. I'm like, mm, nah, no. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, you know, back in the day, I'd be like, oh, but I can fix that person, or like maybe I'm wrong because there's this part of them, and. It's more like a wide-eyed, doe-eyed approach to versus your intuition. And now yeah. I'm just kind of like, mm, nah. Well, I, was, I feel like if you've had a lot of experience. I've met so many people, that, you know, know like so many people. I've met every single different type of person you can imagine, like touring that much. Like most years um, I was like seeing my bed once one month a year, you know. Do you, do you like people? Um. <laughs> I'm very like I, I'm a very one-on-one -on -one person okay and when I think someone's 
when I when I get a really good like vibe with someone, I love them. Like mm-hmm. I'm and I love the idea of people and what they can be, but I get a little disappointed when I see what some people are capable of. Have you have you had a lot of people like disappoint you in your life? Um I've had major disappointments from a few people. Okay. Like really big ones. And the ones that you look, every day someone's gonna disappoint you, but I brush them off. Mm-hmm. I move on. I don't hold that grudge like I said earlier. Like I'm I just take the L and go, okay, well, you know now I know not to waste energy on that person or whatever. Sure, yeah. But yes, I've had some big L's from like like a, f- a few th- instances in my life and I, yeah, really got majorly in the pit because of it. Yeah, has, it has it like permanently affected your your perceptions of people, these these L's that you're talking oh, about? Oh yeah, it made me better. Like it made me a better person actually. In what, in what way? Like I'm not bitter at all. At any of it, it actually made again like taught me gratitude for like other perspectives of other things that turned out from those situations. Because mm-hmm. in hindsight, I was like, "Oh fuck, I'm so fucking glad that happened then, because now this and that led to that, to that, to that, and without that, that would have been here." And so I try and think of it like that. And um, you know, I I believe in karma, and I have to just like let it go because I don't right. want to. Stress. You're, fo- you're following the uh, timeline, and you're like, well, everything that has happened to me. Very Donny Darkoing. Sure. <laughs> fuck, I'm si- fuck, I watched that movie a while ago. I'm trying to remember. I, I, just just remember like, I just remember the song from that. Which one? Echo and the Bunny Man? I find it kind of. Uh, funny. Oh, uh, uh, Gary Jewell's cover of Tears for Fears. Mad World? Mad World. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, what were you saying? I don't even know. <laughs> um, but that soundtrack's amazing. Echo and the Bunny Man, The Killing Moon. Oof. Do you think. From all the people that you've met in your personal experiences, do you believe in general that people are good or at the very least have good intentions? I do. And I have read this book called The Four Agreements. And one of the biggest takeaways I got from it was to never take anything personally in the way that people react towards you because a lot of the time they're projecting. And so, again, like people, everyone has their own narrative going on. And I like to believe that at people's core, unless you're a psychopath or a sociopath, and you, you feel emotion, there is guilt that you feel and you have to live with. You might not show it to everyone, but, um, you know, I, I do believe that there's reasons behind everything. And I, I'm pretty philosophical in the way that I see things, but I, that doesn't like that doesn't soften me. Like if if someone I feel like is not going to positively affect my life, I don't really let them in. Mm. Mm. And that was something I had to learn to do because I would it's usually. A, it's a skill. It's a skill. It's, yeah. I mean, you're. I think you're talking about like just trying, to, and it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot of thematically yeah. what we're talking about ties into a lot of our calls. You're just being intentional about your life. You know, intentional about the, the people you bring in. Intentional about the things. Yeah, that you it's do. really important. If someone constantly feels like they're draining you and like not bringing, like you're not uplifting each other, you just might not be right to be hanging with each other. Sure, you know? sure. Maybe someone that they meet is better for them and will uplift them. And, you know, that's how I have to think of it. Would you like to take more phone calls? Hell yeah. Hello. Darb, is that you? Yes, it's me, Darb. You can call me Brad for short. Okay, how's it going, Brad? Because Uh-oh, Darb. Bradford, Brad. sorry. Bradford. But, uh, oh, I'm a long it's an time, anagram. First time caller. What's going on, man? And uh, uh, nothing much. I just, you know, wanted to call in and talk about my grandson, my, my little buddy. But before I do that, I just wanted to say I really enjoy y'all show. And, you know, God bless Allison. And God bless you too, Lyle. Thanks, I man. She talked about early Molly, and I just want to say God bless Molly. We you guys are doing a really good job. And, you know, God bless Kate you, and the Night Bot and, you know, Legion Kings and the Gorn Lord and OG Bat Cow and God bless Macho Man and Bret Hart and Owen Wilson and God bless Richard Christie, Sal, all of them. Howard Stern and all Robin them. and God bless the Kansas City Chiefs and God bless Jesus and Joseph. So Brad. Without them, we wouldn't have God. And, uh, you know, God bless G.G. Allen, you know. Yeah. So, 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 Brad, so Brad, G. G. Yep. so Brad, so Brad, so Brad, God bless Brad, Brad. And Bell. Brad. 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 
Oh, he hung up. Well, I feel like God you know, bless Gigi Allen. I, you, know, you know Gigi Allen, right? Of course I do. He like takes shits on take, stage and used stuff. To. He's and dead now. He's now people dead. take shits dead. on his grave. He, and that's probably what he would have wanted. No, that's what he wanted. They do it. He loves. He probably loves it. You know what is, upsets me is I when people hang up on the bit. It's like I don't. You can do a bit. I don't care. But if you're gonna listen, if you just if you're gonna call in and do a troll or a bit, I don't care. But don't hang up. I'll, let's talk. For God's sake, like, make it funny. I don't even care if it's funny or not. I just, just when they hang up, it's like we could have gotten into something. Nah, yeah, but you know what? It was a nice uh, palate cleanser. It was, but I, I want like, who was that guy? What? I have so many questions. I love how it was like Kansas City Chiefs, Gigi Allen. I feel like he said Taco Bell as well. He did say Taco Bell. I love that. Like, God bless Taco but, Bell. But well, he was so scared. It was, it was very. He, why was he? He was like scared. He thought that we were gonna get like mad at him. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. No, we we agree though. We I agree. Like, God bless Taco Bell. Why? I don't know why he like was. He thought he was gonna get in trouble if he didn't like hang up immediately. Like that's not that we can. We maybe you just hey, maybe you just need to get it out. Maybe you just need to do some blessings and hang up. You know. Let's talk to another person. Okay. <laughs> um, this is the most comfortable outfit. Yeah, it's nice, right? What if I rebranded and then I'm just like a gecko DJ? Be, please do it. Well, we need more uh, visibility, geckos. Alizard Wonderland. Alizard Wonderland. <laughs> That's the name of this episode. Wow, ten out of ten. Kyle, Cal. That's Cartman from South Park. Yeah. Wait, it Ka is. No, no, I was just doing a oh. bit. Kyle, is that you? <laughs> Could do a bit. Do a bit. Yes, yes, I'm here. Oh my god, I'm in. How are you? Hello? Hello? What's up, man? Holy crap, I can't believe I got through. Emma, this is so cliche. I hear everybody say this shit. You did it. You did. What's going on, man? Not a whole lot. How are you? Uh, I'm hanging out. I'm a gecko. I'm here with Alice in Wonderland. She is also a gecko. It's awesome. Uh, I wait, do. I'm we... not familiar with Alice in Wonderland. Well, well, That's okay. well. Now you are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, Australia Kyle... is a cool country. It is the best. It's great. Have you ever been? I have not. Okay, so you don't even know if that's true. <laughs> no, that's true. but I mean, there's lots of shit there that will kill you. True. Very true. Kyle, how can we get you this evening? Uh, so I, I called, I guess, I, I, I had a story-ish, kind of. Um, we would love to hear your story-ish, kind of. Okay. Um, so I have a nine-year-old daughter. And her mom has been missing for the last two and a half years. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe I should reach out to, like, my ex-wife's family to see if maybe she's still even around. When you say but missing, it's a how, when when she went yes. missing two years ago. Like, what what exactly happened? Okay, so I was a heroin addict. And uh, three years ago, we both decided to get clean and went to rehab. Now, when uh, when I was choosing to get clean, um, I had health complications with my heart and had to get a pacemaker and all that. So I spent like 40 days in the hospital before I went to rehab. And the mother of my child went to rehab. So she got out before I did and went back out to drugs. I stayed clean. And now I have three years clean. Congratulations. And thank you. Um, actually, my life is amazing these days. It's amazing. But it uh, so, yeah. So she's uh she went back out to use and um has had no contact with her daughter whatsoever. It just kind of fell off the face of the earth. No okay. nothing on Facebook. So she she didn't necessarily go missing as much as she just kind of left. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, I split up with her because, like, I, I couldn't be around someone still using drugs. Makes okay. complete sense. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sorry, but I have a question. Would you want to do this so that she could reconnect with your child? And would you be comfortable if she was still using and she reconnected with your child? I would not allow her around my child if she was still using. But if she went down the proper channels and got herself, you know, taken care of, I mean, I'd have no problem supervising visits with her child. It's it's really hard on my daughter for her mom to be gone. Mm. Yeah. Is she aware of the situation? Um, I I mean, she has to know that her her my my daughter does know that. Um, you know that we were sick at one time, and I don't think she really understands why her mom's missing. Yeah. Do Do you think I don't know how this works? Like at that age. But, like, would telling her or, like, getting in with a therapist to tell her a little bit more information, help her understand and, like, focus on that so she So probably So she does see a therapist okay. to try to, uh, like, help with that, that feeling of loss. Um, and so what I'm contemplating is reaching out to my ex-wife's mother, who hates me, to see if maybe she's heard me contact. But I know that that's going to be kind of rocky. Why, why does she hate you? Um, she thinks that um, it's my fault that her daughter fell into her drug use. Mm-hmm. When it's actually the other way around. Mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, I'm I'm sorry. I know we were just talking about this, but what 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 was it exactly that you said was your motivation behind trying to find uh, her, the mother? It's it's just very hard on you know my daughter, and I feel that she should have contact with her mother. Uh, how old's your daughter? No. Nine and a half. Um, She's nine. I mean, well, listen, it sounds kind of like... She's turning and, 10, and I, like, in a couple months. He, and I feel like if if uh, if her mother wanted a relationship with her... She'd come back. She'd come back. And I, I mean, maybe it's worth you just having that difficult conversation with her mother, uh, with the mother of the the your ex um and maybe just kind of uh, I, taking the l in her probably being mad at you even though it's not your f- fault um and just kind of finding out where she is for your own state of mind and for your own kind of maybe even closure to where she is right now not closure to everything and before you say anything to your daughter but maybe it's worth just going and reaching out and seeing what happens from that even if she's going to be mad and i I feel like uh, and i keep my daughter she go ahead i keep my daughter on the back burner like she doesn't know any of these thoughts of of that i'm trying to contact her Mm -hmm. or what i'm doing you know i her happiness is the biggest deal for me and i have full custody you know Um, uh, listen, Kyle. I think it's uh, it's it's nice that you're trying to get uh, the mother involved. But if she left two years ago to go do whatever she's gonna do, and she didn't want to be in your daughter's life, I I don't think that trying to find her, you know, I, I mean, part of me is just like, listen, you know, if you, you left, you left. Yeah, maybe it's better to focus the energy on just having a really great. I mean, it honestly sounds like you ha- you're you an amazing father Absolutely. and you're doing like really fucking good moves on all of it. Um, and maybe I would just focus the energy on that. Um, but I would also probably do a little bit of a secret background check and speak and reach out to the grandparents and, and just kind of see what's up. But I don't know if it 
you should even do it for your daughter. I think you should just do it to kind of get a gauge on where things are at right now and then keep spending all the positive energy on you and your daughter's relationship because honestly, like, you sound like an amazing father and it's, you know, not many people get even one of those. So, it's like, true, yeah. you're, you know, that's amazing. Well, thank you. I, I do it. You know, I work my, my full-time job. I pick them up from school every day and, you know, I'm just doing everything I can. Kyle, man, is, uh, is there any other sort of aspect of this or, or anything that you want to say about it all before we go? Or about I, have a, I have a question for you at this off topic. Hit so, us. Lyle, I, 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 um, I found you probably three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, I started with like the earliest, like, not the earliest, like the, the newest podcast that you were doing okay. on Spotify. And I, I listened to that, you know, for a few days because I, I listen to you at work. I can put my headphones in and listen to you all day. Um, so then I decided, well, let's go to the oldest ones first and work our way up. And then the okay. oldest ones, you always said that you, like at the end, people were like, I love you, Gick. And you oh, always yes. say, I love you too. And now, now at I the did. newest ones, you, you, you don't say it. I don't do it anymore. It's true. I don't. Yeah, you, should tell, you should do it again. Do I don't that. do I don't do it. I, well, yeah. I say, I say, uh, I say, I appreciate you. Cause I, Cause that feels more like genuine. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. You it's know, not because because I don't I because love can be misconstrued in many different ways. Like I don't lo, like there's you know I have love for my friends. I have love for and I think you know I there is this like spiritual uh, I love you because you're another human being on the earth and like you know that and I think that's a real version of love. And I think appreciation is a version of love, but for specificness, for specificness's sake, so that I am being understood clearly in the type of love that I have, I say I appreciate you because I feel like that's a little bit more clear. Can I ask you one more question? So of course. Uh, when you stutter, is that a bit? Yes. Or are you, is that really, like, you're not, don't, not sure what you're going to say? When I, am I doing a bit when I stutter? Yeah, because you're going to say when you're, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 and then you spit it out. <laughs> no, no, that's not a bit. <laughs> did you know you did that? I didn't even know I did that. I didn't know you did and, that. And now I'm <laughs> self-conscious, Kyle. <laughs> you're, de you're definitely not getting an I love you now. You better tell me you love me. Um, Kyle, listen, I appreciate the hell out of you. I think that you're uh, doing a good job as a father, and um, thank you for calling, man. Good luck to you. I love you, Gek. Take care, baby. <laughs> oh, you're killing <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. You got to be brutal sometimes, you know? It's important. He's setting boundaries. Boundaries. You know? Thematically, okay, uh, Allison, to wrap up, mm -hmm. some themes that we've yes. experienced uh, over the course of... Um, no fear, taking risks, no inner fear, happiness, taking risks. the pit, being prepared to fucking go through the pit. Yeah, yeah. It'll feel like forever. Everyone was kind of going through a pit. You know what? Life comes in waves, yeah. order to disorder, and then you need disorder to get back into a different type of order. Mm -hmm. Always mm -hmm. makes sense in the end. Allison, thank you very much for doing this stream with me, man. My pleasure. What is there anything you want to say to the folks? Well, tell us. I want to let you plug stuff, and I mean, then just any general. Nothing things. really to plug. Just um, if you haven't heard of me, I would love for you to check that out. I got mu new music dropping, but actually, I just announced that now. There's Allison me. Wonderland on YouTube, oh, spelled no, with yeah. one L. A L I S O N. Wonderland. And I mean, anywhere. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, sometimes TikTok. I like looking at TikTok a lot. I like looking at TikTok. I'm too. like, I try and do content, but I, I like to show my shows on TikTok. I think that's fun. I don't really know. I just look, if you vibe with me, check it out. If not, totally cool as well. Anything else uh, non pluggy if, that you want to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Any, uh, if like 
Um, uh, everyone who's listening, who's a fan of being like reading all your comments, I love you guys. I love you guys and appreciate you, but I love you. Do your thing, man. Because uh, I genuinely feel that. I feel love for anyone that um, gives me love in a healthy way. Um, yeah. If it's not healthy, I don't really just go away. Allison, uh, <laughs> it has been an honor gecking with you. Please I'll, check out Alice in Wonderland. On, that was uh, gecking awesome. Yeah, it was gecking awesome. Yeah. I'm very excited to see Al Lizard Wonderland whenever you do it. I love it. I mean, and uh, this was a pleasure, man. Thank you for it coming. It was so on. good. This is my dream to be a green thing. Have a Bye, good night, everyone. folks.